Hi there, I'm Monty McKinnon. Thanks for joining me. Today I have a very special episode for you. This is all about the workshop. And today we're gonna feature Michael's workshop of Michael Builds. And that's coming up right after we spin this intro. Okay, we are back. Now, Michael was the first one to send in photographs of his workshop to me, and he sent this in last summer or last fall, whenever it was that I first announced the idea of exchanging pictures of our shops. And so he, he got this off right away, and my goodness, has he got himself a shop. Take a look at the first picture here. This picture here, is of what I thought initially was a tiny house, but it turns out, I guess if he has a problem with his wife and she kicks him out, it could become in fact a tiny house. It's very well appointed. You'll notice to the left, you can see that his wife has got him something very special to play with. He has his own swing set with a slide so that he can be well entertained in the backyard. Now, Michael's not much of a gardener, as you can see, running around the shed, but we'll give him a pass on that. It still looks pretty good. So that's his shed. It's a standalone building, and I'm jealous. It's a huge shop compared to what I have. Well, let's move on and take a look at the next photograph. Okay, once we open up the doors here, you can see how smart this man is. He's using every bit of space he has, and he is maximizing his storage by, first of all, taking and utilizing the inside of the doors. Now, this on the left is a little flat piece. Um, I don't know what you call it, but it's a bench for standing on, for painting, doing moldings up around the ceiling, things of this nature. But inside his shop, you can see he moves straight in. He's got a lot of tools in here. And notice up on the left, on Michael, there's a couple of things that give me some concern here, and I want to point these out to you. First of all, he's got the ladder fastened up on the left. I don't know how you've got that suspended there, but having that directly over the table saw that vibrates and whatnot, that makes me nervous. If that ever came off, if you were doing a small cut, you could have a major problem on your hand. My guess is you turn the table saw and saw the wood coming out the door. I'm not sure if that's the case. Notice the tool chest at the far end of the shop, and he's got shelves in there. Let's get a closer look at that. There it is there. You can see how he's got the ladder up on the left here. He's got wood over top of the saw. That makes me really nervous. He's got wood stored behind it. I'm just cautious about that, Michael, and I'm not sure why you've got that right where you have it. Right at the far end, it looks like he's got storage bins for bolts, screws, and different things that he uses in his shop. And I, I can see there's something up on the top of the bench here. It looks like it's his uh, Milwaukee tool bag. It's probably, by the size of that, it's probably for a drill. And I can see the compressor in the lower right corner. This is great for cleaning up the workbench and around the saw. And then notice down here on the left, he's got tucked in beside the saw. This man has made use of every square inch he's got available to him. He's got his shop vac, and so I think that is just great. So I really like that. Here's a, another photo that's even a better, uh, more close-up look at this uh, picture here. You can see at the far end, he's got a router table, and we're going to see that in just a second. The shelves are there. He's got storage bins. You have utilized this space extremely well. Opposite the saw, you can see that he's got his chop saw, and you'll see a bench. Now, notice on the wall, there's something I want to point out to you. He's got the outline of a, of a mold or a jig that he used for making a Jazzmaster guitar. Now, he made this guitar with his niece, 
and I did a video on that, and I'm going to link that at the end of this video so you can have a look at it. It's really worth having a peek at this thing. This was their first go at a guitar, and they did an outstanding, outstanding job. It's really neat, so you want to have a look at that. The chop saw here, in spite of the fact that it's got a guard on it, I know there is a a pin that goes in the side arm so you put the the saw blade down into the slot put the pin in and then it's it's secure and it's out of the way and it's of no problem no no possible danger here he's got his power switch right over top of it I like the fact that underneath here he has a workbench which is undoubtedly used for storage. He's probably got paint and things like that in there, but he may also have some blades in there and the bolts he needs in order to change saw blades if that happens to be the case. But he's got lots of swing room here for the chop saw, so that's pretty good. And I take it that's an apron you've got hanging there. You're a lot like me. Now take a look here at his router table. I really like this. I'm jealous. Notice that the white platform at the back moves forward. That's his fence. And that will give him the depth of cut that he's gonna need for his router. Now, I'm not sure, I can't tell by the, the look of this whether or not there's a, a hole for a wheel. I see you've left your router bit in there. I tend to take mine out, Michael. That's just a safety thing. And if that's it, and then that means he can crank the handle and raise or lower the blade, whatever he chooses to do. The glass door shows you a vacuum here to suck up the sawdust underneath and his router hanging in there. And undoubtedly in the drawers here, he's got storage for router bits, maybe another router, different templates that he can put in there. That's a real nice setup. Well done. Now here's a close-up picture of that guitar that you saw on the wall. Look at the wiring diagram and, and the size that he has here for everything that's in there, where all the pockets go, and then you'll see that all on the right-hand side. This is quite a neat little shop. It really is a wonderful man cave, and I like it a lot. So I would like to see your pictures. Thank you, Michael, for sending these in to me. I am jealous for the amount of space you have and the fact that you can get out there and concentrate. You're not interrupted. You don't have, you know, somebody walking in on you while you're doing your, your video or whatever you happen to be doing. Now, folks, you need to know that Michael of Michael Builds, with almost 200,000 subscribers, and he does work in cement, and he does amazing cement work. You really need to see his stuff. And he's got some stuff coming shortly that I had a little bit of a sneak preview that I'm quite jealous. It's, it's awesome, Michael. I just love what you're working on. So let's get that video up there for everybody to see real quick. It's excellent. So this is one video that Michael builds that you're gonna to wanna to pass around to your friends because you won't be embarrassed. He's fun, he's bright, he's articulate, he's, a, he's just fun to watch. And so tune in to him and, and I think once you do that, you're gonna hit the subscribe button. And speaking of that, like what you see here, and you know we got all kinds of videos here on, on building guitars, come on and subscribe. It's down on this side and hit the, hit the like button and the bell so you get notified. You need to know that I will be back on the guitar shortly. The body, by the way, is pretty well done. And we've got the hole in here for the sound port. We've got the curvature on the arm and we've got all the shell around it, and now I'm just gonna go in and just tweak a few things. You don't need to see that, that's boring. And I'll flatten that all out and get it all ready for finish. And what we're gonna start next is the neck. So thank you for joining me, and I hope I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to look down below. There are some links there, and I do have a link. I keep reminding you here that if you are gonna order some Starbond glue, 
the CA glue, make sure you order the debonder and that you order the accelerator so that it, it adheres real quick. It's great glue. Well, that's it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. And now, I, this is Yorkshire, Yorkshire tea. Oh my goodness, the people in England have got it down pat. You really want to get some Yorkshire tea. It will make you feel alive and, and excited and well, and it will carry you even through the morning. So it's way better for you than, than the coffee. And by the way, if you want decaf, they have decaf too. And if you ever get in a situation where you can't get decaf, just take it, pour it in, get about this much water in the bottom of it, heat it up, pour it down the drain, leave the bag in or whatever you're using, and fill it up again. And now you've got a decaf that's about 90% caffeine free. So I've been told. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.